Hello. <laughs> hey, it's so good to be in Tennessee. I like sweet tea. It's so good. Do you like it? <laughs> so you guys have shackles on, right? Hold them up. <laughs> how does it feel? <laughs> you know how much you used to you? You're in some respects you are disabled. <laughs> and if I ask you to open your Bible, you can't do it? Maybe you could, but I'll read it for you. We'll go that way. Come to the altar. Your father's arms are open wide, but if you have shackles on you, you can't open your arms back. And sometimes I feel when we have shackles in our lives, we're closed off to who God is because we don't trust him. We think we know better. And then we always ask the question, why me? Why does this happen to me? Shackles can be anything. It could be sin, utter rebellion. It could be circumstantial, which turns into utter rebellion. That turns into bitterness. I've been bitter before. I've been absolutely bitter at God. I've shaken my fist in his face. I've said to him, how dare you? You say that you're a God of love, but what does love have to do with this? Look at my life, Lord. I don't deserve this. I was in eighth grade. Did you guys like middle school? No? I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I was like every other kid out there. I was the third fastest in my eighth grade class running. You can't keep up with me. I ran around the track like it was nobody's business. I talked like you talk. I walked the way you walk. I looked the part. I was the part. I was a dreamer. I was a clown. I was funny. I was hilarious. I loved life. And then I went to bed in eighth grade. The fourth quarter of my eighth grade year was April 3rd. I'll never forget that day. I went to bed that night. I woke up the next morning. And my mom's footsteps were coming down the hallway. It was Sunday. It was Easter Sunday. And I knew what my mom was coming down the hall for. She was coming to open my bedroom door to wake me up so that I could get ready to go to church with the family. I had a water bed. I loved that bed. I like rolling around, sloshing around, making waves. I'm not a boarded person still to this day. I'm a night owl, and I like to sleep in. So when I heard my mom's hand shake on the doorknob on my bedroom door, I knew it was time for me to wake up. I was already awake. The birds were chirping outside. The water was gushing through the pipes, the water of the lawn in the backyard. The sun was shining bright that day. I could still see the light like a spotlight, the particles of dust shimmering above my bedspread. And I knew that this day, Easter morning, Sunday morning, was going to be a great day, a great morning, because I was going to get to see aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents. Later on that day, eighth grade, my mom says, wake up, hello, and it was my mom's birthday that day. Hey, mom, happy birthday, happy Easter, too, yahoo, it's going to be a good day, and it was my stepdad's birthday, 
My stepdad and my mom had the same birthday, so it's never hard to forget their birthdays. They also had the same anniversary. Uh, <laughs> and my mom has an identical twin sister, my aunt Virginia, so it was her birthday, of course, as well. A big day. My mom closes my bedroom door to let me come to. I'm still laying on my back trying to maneuver to not wanting really to get up, but my Easter basket was right there. And I went to go see what was inside it. So I swing my legs over my waterbed frame, and the moment I stood to my feet is the moment that my world was torn apart. And my head fell forward. And my chin was touching my chest. And I can't lift it back up. Talk about shackles. And at first I thought I did something wrong. For whatever reason, this was some sort of a kink that it would go away in time during the day, but it never went away. And that caused panic. And overnight, my life has changed. Little did I realize then, but later I would understand that my life would change forever. And I would say, this is what you see before you in eighth grade. Overnight. And I would say, this with a rare muscle nerve disease called torsional dystonia. It's the twisting of my torso. It's why I walk the way that I walk. It's why I talk the way that I talk. I can't run anymore. That was towards the end of my eighth grade year. And then high school hit three months later, four months later. Your world. Your shackles. The students, the things that you wrestle with. Shackles close you off to God. Shackles close you off to anybody. With your arms together right now, you can't really do much. I can't. How's it feel? John, first John, talk about contrast. First John chapter two, verse one. My little children, it begins, or my dear children in another translation. I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. Stop. What? John, who, John is called the disciple who Jesus loved. He's the one that gave himself that title. He's the one that spoke that positive thought into his head. Knowing that he's always loved by Jesus, John was a disciple whom Jesus loved. John saw Jesus, talked to Jesus, did life in Jesus. And his life was transformed because of Jesus. And now he's writing this letter that we've been studying all week long. And right out of the get-go, verse 1, my dear children, I write this letter to you so that you may not sin. So that you may live free. So that you can be whole and not shackled by circumstances, by decisions, by behavior. I'm writing this letter to you because I know who it is that I serve, this Jesus Christ, and he's changed my life forever. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is the one who is truly righteous, an advocate. What is that? Somebody who pleads our case. Somebody who declares things over our lives that we don't want to believe about our lives. 
so many of you in this room believe lies. You believe lies that are spoken over you. I get it. I did too. I struggled with a poor self-esteem. From my eighth grade year to my senior year of high school, I didn't see a better day. Here's a couple pictures I want to show you. Is that all right? That's me in uh, sixth grade. I, you probably have no idea what that machine is. It's a typewriter. And I used to love to type. The next picture is this. There's a picture of me in seventh grade. Next picture, eighth. Next picture, look at my head. Freshman. Next picture. Wait, that's my cup. Okay, so that's my senior year of high school. I'm confined to a wheelchair. The sixth picture shows this. Wheelchair Olympics. I went from a push wheelchair to a motorized wheelchair. If you ever get a chance to maneuver a motorized wheelchair instead of one, do it. It's awesome. <laughs> and the next picture is this. Swimming. The ribbons are lying. They say I got first place, but really I got last place in that meet. But swimming is what God used to help me walk again. My life was chaos for four years of high school. I never saw a better day. You talk about shackles. You talk about lies. Student, what are your shackles? You know, you're going to mess up. You're going to have doubts and fears and insecurities. And God is writing these things to you so that you might believe. So that you would have so much joy in the freedom that you have in Jesus that you will not be tempted to sin anymore. Will you sin? Of course you will because they're human. But so many times I feel like when you sin or when you feel down on your luck, you just beat yourself up. You want to know truth? Jesus will never beat you up spiritually because of your sin and shame. That's why he is called an advocate. That is why he pleads his, your case before the Father Almighty. He is righteous. There's things in your life today that just weigh you down and you need to break free of those things. Now, I get tired of people believing lies. I get one to stare at an airport, and I start believing lies. So what are the lies that you believe? What are the shackles that you hold? Do you say Jesus one minute and sin the next because you feel like you can't because they'll forgive you? That's not the Christian way. He will forgive you, but why would you want to sin? Because he's made you whole. He's declared you righteous. Verse 3, 2, he is the sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He paid that price. How are you doing with Jesus? You've had a week long of, of camp, of conference. It's like, this isn't a camp, it's a conference. It's talking about contrast. You left the world, world 
when you got here, it became another element to a world that was different. And this is a world of truth. It's a contrast to what you left when you came here. And Jesus is doing a work in your lives. And so he wants to make you whole. He wants to use your shackles as a value to you, not as a curse to you. I can't hide behind my disability. Oh, I did for a while. When I was diagnosed in eighth grade, the first thing I did was I wore a neck brace. And a big lump that stuck out that was a bustle. When my head went all the way down to my chest and I couldn't lift it up, my chin up from my chest, I would wear a neck brace to hide the bulge. I didn't need a neck brace. That neck brace wasn't going to do anything for my muscle and nerve disease. It wasn't going to take it away. It wasn't going to remedy it. You know why I wore that neck brace? It's a mask. I wore a neck brace because it's how I thought about it. If I wore a neck brace, maybe people won't stare at me as much, and maybe they'll accept me a little bit more, because when you see a neck brace, you think, oh, he was in a car accident. Oh, it's not permanent. It's going to go away. They look the other way. But if they see somebody with a disability that struggles every day, they know it's permanent. So they'll stare more. That was my rush now. I hid. We aren't supposed to hide. You already declare victorious Christian if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And God is writing this letter to you so that you will not sin, so that you will not have these shackles because Jesus is our advocate. He's already paid that price. Not only for you, but for all of the world. To make your life a contrast. A contrast to what you were to who he wants you to become. And oftentimes by the glory of Jesus Christ, he'll use the very things that you think will cause you shame. He'll use the very things that you hide behind. He'll use those weaknesses that shackle you, that disable you, that defeat you. He will use those things that you don't think are useful but rather ugly, he will use those things for his purpose. I never thought I would be involved in being a speaker. I don't look the part. I'm not rich. I can't even speak right. God one day said, Chris, that's, that's it. Do you trust me? I was in a wheelchair for five years. Be about to bathe me, dress me, get me up out of bed, put me in the bed. I never thought I would ever walk again. And I started to swim just to be with other people who had disabilities. Not like mine, but different. I had fun. I didn't think it would do anything. I just wanted to be involved. And two and a half years later, through water therapy, God used swimming as a tool to help me walk again. I don't walk, I don't walk perfectly. I stumble. I, I trip. I fall. But I will not trade my shackles for anything. 
because they're no longer my shackles. They made me new. They made me whole. I tell people I'm healed. They'll look at me all weird. You're not healed. Look at you. You know, I tell them, you're not healed either. Look at you. Because we all have things in our lives that trip us up. And some of you tonight may think, oh, I can't be a believer. I mess up way too much. You're missing the purpose of why Jesus came. Being a Christian's not fun. I have to obey all the rules. Well, if you truly love who Jesus is, it says in Scripture that his commands are not burdensome. He'll make your burden light. Did you know that Jesus is a high priest? In Hebrews 4, this is why I love Jesus. Verse 14, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. Let us stand with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus identifies with all of us. He suffered. He understands weaknesses. He understands brokenness, student. He understands your pain. Did you know that Jesus was lonely? Because nobody understood him. His disciples didn't know who he was until, or his purpose until after he rose from the dead. Are you lonely tonight? Are you lonely in your life? Are you hiding behind a net brace? Because that covers your shackles. You don't want other people to see them. But Jesus wants to make your shackles whole. He wants to break them so that he can use them. And because you have shackles right now that you're wearing, it's only been 15 minutes. And they're probably ready to get rid of them. Jesus, been, Jesus has been waiting for you to get rid of your life shackles for longer than that. You no longer have to believe lies because he pleads your cause. He comes to your defense. He speaks over you truth and love and peace and joy and goodness and kindness. He wants you to be contagious in the way that you live your life. But I just want to be like everybody else. I wanted to be like everybody else. But you know what? The older I get, I'm glad I'm not like everybody else. I'm different. I'm not bitter. I am better. Because of what God has done in my life. No, I'm not serving it because I'm walking again. When I was in the, the grips of my wheelchair, there was a day where I decided wholeheartedly, Jesus, if I never walk again, so be it. But I want to serve you from this day forward forever. And two years later, I was walking. I still struggle. 
and some struggle every day. And too many times, it's, it's, it's so easy to want to rebel. With God, this wants me to obey. With the Lord, wants me to rest in his freedom. I think of Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, it says, but strengthens all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I have a peace. I want to be contagious. Student, where are you at with your life tonight? Are you wearing the chains? You could break it. You could break that link. You could let it go. And choose not to believe lies spoken over you or about you. You can realize that when you fail God, He has open arms for you. He forgives. That's what He came for. He came to give us life and to give us freedom. And by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. For this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk the same way in which Jesus walked. Come to the altar. Your father's arms are open wide, but if you're wearing shackles, your arms can't be open in return to receive it. He loves us so much. He cares for us so much. And there are people in this room, perhaps, that when you came to this booth conference, you were elated that you got to get a break from the world that you live in and get away. There are some of you who are holding on to maybe a root of bitterness in your soul. Maybe somebody in their life just doesn't seem fair. I get it. I understand that absolutely. But perhaps that is a shackle to you. And that is something that is binding and absolutely trapping you. And to you, that makes your world dark. And you need to come back into that light. You were loved. You're not garbage. You're not a mistake. Your failures do not define you. Exclamation point. All the things that you think you have failed in, stop now. That's not who Jesus called you to be. He paid for everything to use your broken mess to impact somebody else. He wants you to be comfortable in your skin. I love that phrase. He wants you to stop feeling shame and guilt. Because if you truly understand the cause of Jesus Christ and why he came to this earth to save you and me, then your love for him is perfected. 
and it's a struggle, student. You may go home in a couple of days, back again to the life that you left, and struggle with things that you dealt with before you came here. But don't let those things weigh you down. Get back up. Keep going. Let this week be a week of change, a week of contrast from one life to the next. I'm free, student. I'm free indeed. I want to be contagious. When people see me, I want them to see a smile, and I want them to see joy, and I want them to hear my laughter. And I want them to walk away understanding that I know Jesus, do they? He loves you, and he wants his love in you to free you. But if you have shackles that bind you, how can your arms be open to that reception? Come to the altar. Your father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is free. The lies disappear. The truth reigns. John writes this letter of first John so that we will believe and know. So that we would not want to sin, even though we will keep on sinning because we're human, but we don't want to anymore because of what God's love for us has done to us and showed us. We are his dear children, holy and dearly loved. And soon he wants you to go home knowing that. You don't have to sit, sit with shackles anymore. They get to be broken. And you can experience this absolute freedom. I write this greeting, this letter. Because I passed it for God's people. They're no longer bound or trapped. They're whole, they're new, they're set free. Lord Jesus, thank you for tonight. God, thank you for these students. I, my heart goes out to them. I remember high school. I didn't like it because I was trying to just survive it. God, I let the labels define me. I believe the lies that were spoken over me. And Lord, these students are doing the same thing, perhaps, in their own lives. And there's insecurities there, and there's fears there, and those things are what shackle them. Or maybe, Lord, they claim that they're Christians, but, Lord, they're, they're stuck in a sin. And that shackles them. And more than anything, more than anything, tonight I want them to understand how much you love them. How much they can be free. How much, Lord, their failures will not define them. If they'll mess up, they'll continue to fail, but that doesn't define them. God, they can always get back up and persevere and keep going. God, they pray over their shackles. Those things that hold them so tight, it's suffocating. It's difficult. The things they hide behind, the blemishes, Lord, the things they think are ugly, those things of life that cause them shame, stop it now. Yeah, let their shackles just break. 
God, they'll still deal with the remnants of it, but Lord, let those shackles break and let them be used instead for your mighty purposes. God, I pray that they would trust you with those shackles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.